What is going on, people? We are back to our regular Sunday morning content. We'll see if we can actually stick to this time date for the next installment in the fall movie series. Like I said, we're th- th- this 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 time of year. You know, it, it's a smorgasbord of things. You know, we get our Oscar movies. We get some some of the last minute a uh, couple of blockbusters, and just based off of how this past week is going, not yet, Sean. Just based off of how this past week uh, went with dumb money, uh, and now this week, oh, screw it. I'm just gonna get to it. I am joined <laughs> once again by Luke of Luke Reviews and Sean of Math Teacher Movies, two people who have become hey! permanent staples. There we go. <laughs> Got it that time. Two people who have become permanent staples of the Talking TV podcast, Talking TV family, and we are here to talk about the next film from Gareth Edwards, who has become a director that has certainly earned a reputation for himself in these last couple of years with his latest, and I cannot emphasize this enough, original big-budget science fiction film, The Creator. Sean, Luke, you guys ready to do this? Let's do it. As, as the protagonist would say, I ordered my hot sauce an hour ago, so yeah, exactly. I'm, Absolutely. I'm very much ready. Absolutely. All of that and more on today's episode of the Talking TV Podcast. What is going on, people? Happy Sunday morning. We are officially into October now. We are into the last three months of the year, quarter four of 2023. This is, uh, again, we are are post-strike. The WGA strike has officially been wrapped as of this past Sunday. Deal, uh, you know, the, they are currently working on striking up a deal with SAG right now. So things are getting immediately back into production because they've got a whole slew of movies that they need to get out next year. We are into the fall TV season. We just got the premiere of The Boys final uh, spinoff, Gen V. We've got The Continental out on Peacock. Invincible is premiering in a month. Loki season two is right around the corner. Ahsoka is just about to wrap up. And so we're into that point of the year, people. You know, we're into spooky season. People are starting their horror trends. You know, their horror watches. Luke, you and I were talking before the show about how this year's horror watch was going to be final destination for you. I can't wait for you to discover the many ups and downs that come with that horror franchise along with so many others. Apparently, people are going nuts about Saw X over this past weekend as far as being the first good Saw movie in, like, how God only knows how how long it's been, you know. I, I just like after sitting through all like eleven or twelve or thirteen or however many entries I had to sit through with Halloween two years ago. I'm like, yeah, the idea of sitting through another long horror franchise just uh, unfortunately does not excite me. You know, like put it this way, I watched all five Scream movies earlier this year, and I, I felt like I wanted to gouge my eyes out afterwards because of how Ooh. just repetitive that franchise got. But we are not here to talk about that today. So. As we know, and I've, uh, as, as all three of us already know, the unfortunate vic- an unfortunate victim of the strikes was that Dune 2, our much beloved, our much anticipated Dune 2, was delayed uh, from November until March of next year. And so that kind of left a little hole, I feel like, in all of our hearts as far as, you know, our, our beloved big budget science fiction fair goes. But we had a trailer that dropped last year. I, I don't think I'd heard anything about this movie before I actually saw the trailer come out. And, you know, it it had a lot of familiar things about it, you know, a familiar director, a familiar cinematographer, a familiar lead star. But there was one thing that really stood out about this, you know, as we were looking into it. And I was doing the research deep into this. I'm like, I checked. I'm like, okay, there's no no graphic novel that this is based on. No, like, you know, sneaky comic book line that somebody didn't know about. No, like, prior existing movie or short film. No concept. No anything. And I was like, holy crap. Is this a big budget Science fiction film with hold on, let me look up the budget because that's also going to be very important to this discussion. It's low. It's, ve- it's, 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 it's very them. low compared to some of the other ones. Yeah, eighty million. Keep that in mind. Eighty million, an eighty million dollar budgeted movie that is entirely original and not based off of any pre existing IP or material. This has got to be some kind of a joke. There's no way this is actually happening. There's no way that Hollywood, specifically 20th Century Studios, which as we know is owned by Disney, would actually take a risk on this. There's no shot. And so I just wanted to start off this conversation here, guys, because I'm just as confused. I haven't really done any research into this. Maybe you guys will be able to answer this. How the hell did this happen? You know? I mean, yeah, Sean, you're, I can tell you're eagerly chopping at the bit. Well, like, how did this happen? I think there's corners of the world. The fact that they marketed this 
consistently and yes. annoyingly as there's no IP with this. There's going to be no Denny's uh, breakfast specials with this. There'll be no lunch boxes. This is in a completely separate from any IP that's ever existed. It's a completely original story. And that marketing is definitely what works. That's what's getting people into this year. That's what's getting people excited about it. That's what's causing people to give good reviews on this. Maybe it might be a Maybe. little bit. They Maybe. Leading their hand a little bit there because <laughs> they're so excited about the original, completely original film that is no way at all predictable and is no way at all shades <laughs> of a lot of the IP that we see very much so. So it's like, oh, sure, it's not literally based off of anything, uh, but I mean, like, I don't know. I think they shuffle the letters of some of the names because holy <laughs> shit, like this thing, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm going to dive right into it. This is the most beautiful movie I've seen all year and that's it. Like this is, <laughs> I, I feel pretty mean. I know there's people that love it, and I love that people love it, and I know that people want to love this, and they want to love this because it's a response. They have a responsibility to say we need to love this movie because it's an original sci-fi, and otherwise we'll just get more MCU's and DCU's and DCECU's use. And so, <laughs> I, and but I, I get it, but like I just think Gareth Edwards has kind of missed the mark on a lot of his movies. Um, with the exception of Rogue One, which is a little bit wishy-washy on if that was full Edwards or not. I mean, that's right. a lot of Tony Gilroy, especially right. after we've seen Andor. We know that oh, Gilroy might have been talking about talking that one up quite a bit. Yeah. And so I, I think that he's an exceptional, exceptional director that like opens these worlds. And I was just in all of these worlds, but I mean, let's get let's get someone else to get that script cooking, my guy, because that that was that was the toughest part for me is that this story is just very very derivative to the point where I'm like, yeah, you're bragging about being an original story, but you're, you're far from that. Yeah, definitely, Luke. Your thoughts on the purported originality of this movie? Yeah, I, I don't think it's like wholly original, but what I thought it was okay. We take a little bit from Dune, we take a little bit from Blade Runner, we take a little bit from like five other things and then we yeah. just throw that's it in definitely a, a lot of specific camera and montage as well i definitely was picking out i'm like okay this is avatar as well absolutely avatar i'm like and I just throw it all into a sci-fi cocktail but it, it really worked for me like even because of that just no, noticing yeah. these tiny little tidbits like sci- sci-fi is my favorite genre like, quite easily i think you could, it's, the, it's the one that you can do the most with like combine it with any other genre and it's just always good like sci-fi horror it's just the best combination of genre there is and i really enjoyed this one like for years i was like where is gareth edwards he made yeah. like two big movies with really big things like i want to see more movies with really big things in them because he <laughs> makes really big things actually feel really big and, and that continues in this movie and we'll, we'll talk about the, the the big thing that i really liked um but no, i had a really good time with it i was i was into the story i'm not saying it's anything groundbreaking it's just it's just it's just cool like like yeah. for 90 percent of it i was looking at it, this is the coolest thing i've ever seen like, yeah this, yeah this is, definitely this is, that. Yeah. this is made for me specifically yeah like, Ex- I exactly no i i couldn't agree with that more because you're, you guys are both right to a certain extent i'm like immediately i don't even think we were like 15 minutes into the movie before i'm like okay i've seen this before i've seen this before i've definitely <laughs> seen this before and like it was definitely a thing of where it's like every single plot twist that was coming i'm like okay yeah i i knew that was gonna happen you know i knew so so i i definitely I tend to agree that the purported originality of this was definitely a little bit hyped up by the marketing for sure but hey as far as i'm concerned that's the marketing's job you know i don't exactly get as angry at that as i used to but that being said I definitely think there's a thing that, like, you know, people need to take into consideration as, once again, in my never-ending quest to make people understand, like, the difference between, like, movie marketing versus what is the actual case with certain of these things, which is where it's like, look, no movie that is not based on IP is going to be truly original. You know, the idea of something that is truly original that nobody has ever seen, but we've talked about this to death, the idea of there really only being about eight to ten different story ideas that can actually be trademarked up and the fact that everyone is supposed to at least put their own original stamp on it, and that's what makes it, you know, that, that's what continues the idea of originality. But in this instance, like I said, both of you are right. There are a million and a half things that we have, that, that we see in this movie that we have seen in other things before. I think the thing that separates this from others is, like you said, the fact that Gareth Edwards, you know, regardless of what you think of his scripts and his stories, for sure, they have problems, they have holes. The look of these movies is unlike anything else. Yeah. You know, same as well, again, 2014's Godzilla. There's a reason why I am a big, big fan of that movie and like it more than any of the other monster verse movies that they released after that. Uh, Rogue One, again, there was a reason why 
And again, I, I like to give credit to that to both Tony Gilroy and Gareth Edwards because I think that while Tony Gilroy absolutely is responsible for a lot of the better script elements and specifically the third act stuff, like there, I, I was doing a lot of reading. There's a lot of changes in that third act that were made between what we saw versus what was originally conceived. Uh, obviously, you know, even going back to the trailers. But again, the look of that movie, it's probably the best looking Star Wars movie that's oh, yeah. ever been made, you know? And 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 I and I think that goes for this movie as well, you know? And again, I have to, this to be, everyone's emphasizing the originality. I have to emphasize this. $80 million, $80 million budget. And it's one, it's already like one of, if not the best looking movie of the year. Like, I don't think that that, I, I don't think that we can emphasize that uh, enough, you know? So he definitely, in terms of like creating worlds that we can truly get like lost in and get invigorated in where just every single little detail, you know, is, is really engaging. I, I think that he definitely deserves credit for that. As far as the influences go. Yeah. I, again, I'm looking at them right there. You know, Apocalypse Now, Baraka. <laughs> Blade Man, Akira, The Hit, E.T., Paper Moon. The list goes on and on and on and on. And that you know? is all totally fine, truly. Like, you know, the best artists do steal. And I love exactly. seeing, like, exactly. I love watching everything ever all at once. Tarantino's and, yeah, like, he's doing Wong Kor Y. He's doing Wong Kor Y right now. It's great. Yeah. And so, like, I'm all for, like, that kind of stuff. I think it's when it really affects the absolute mechanisms of the story. And so, therefore, I can, I can call the predict uh, – the uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, can, I can call the predictability of them. And I am a very dumb movie viewer. Like, I might be smart after I watch oh, it. But stop. when I'm, when I'm oh, in the movie, I'm dumb. I'm right there with you. Sean. No, like, I, like, uh, like I, I, if I'm calling a, a, a twist, if I'm calling a twist, that's bad. That's bad because I do not call twists. I'm always fooled by them. And so these ones, I just kind of called the like baselines of them. And there's quite a few of them that just feel so right, right there, right for the picking. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I can't <laughs> deal with these. And I feel like I've, I've come out of the gates pretty down on this movie. I, I, I feel bad about that because I want this movie to succeed. I want this movie to be seen in theaters and it should with some of the, like it's one of the most beautiful. It's right now my top pick for uh, visual effects. And I, I see a world where this wins best visual effects, especially yeah. with that modest budget. I yeah. think with that modest budget, sometimes that's the kind of movie that wins visual effects. And with Dune out, I mean, I think that this is going to win it and it deserves to win it. And I hope it does. There's interesting things explored. Um, but you know, I've, I'm not loving that in our time, like everyone's like, this is a movie for our time. And I'm like, it definitely isn't because in this, the robots end up being the good guys. Right. And right now we're kind of on a different track in terms right. of the uh, creativity in Hollywood. So I'm seeing a lot of people on strike probably seeing that, you know, robots are good guys and it gets a little bit iffy. There's a little bit of a fog of war in here, which while I enjoyed that creates complexity, I love complexity that complexity never really connects by the end. And um, I'm going to be a father in a couple of months. And there is, you know, there's a one scene where the little robot kid uh, puts uh, his head on his shoulder. And that's what causes John David Washington to finally change his mind. That could be the case when I have a kid. I'll probably change my mind about a lot of shit once, like, my little daughter, like, rests her head on her shoulder. But until then, that doesn't feel like a good narrative for me. Right. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up where you're right. The idea of like, I get what this movie's going for in terms of, yeah, it's very clearly supposed to be allegorical of Vietnam and uh, very allegorical of, again, like, you know, typically like America and flexing its, you know, its military industrial might over other over, over other countries, you know, in this purported war that has definitely been grossly, uh, grossly mismarketed to certain people. You know, I like so I got all that. But I do tend to agree. The idea of them purporting and building up the robots and the AI as the good guys, you know, and where you have the Ken Watanabe character who just randomly says in the third act is like, oh, yeah, you know, the the the, the explosion that happened on Ground Zero at L.A., you know, that wasn't uh, that, you know, that wasn't even us. It was a human coding error, you know, and now they, they, they've just got this emphasis. And I'm like, I, I see where this is going thematically. But I, 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 I and it's, I, I do think it is a little bit problematic where this movie was pitching it as like, okay, this is the war against AI. But I pretty quickly figured it out. It's like, oh, the AI is going to be the good guy by the end of this. I just, yeah. I have a feeling, and I don't, I don't know how I feel about Hollywood pushing that narrative, you know, <laughs> especially since kind of the tides have kind of turned on that, on that sort of thing, you know. Yeah, because we're talking about man as the greatest of monster. And I mean, true, absolutely true. true. Like, but, true. but, but again, at this point, it. It just we've gets seen it before. Tricky. 
I mean, I like that there was no good guys in war. Like the, the robots did some bad shit. The uh, uh, other people did some bad shit. And so, like, I, I kind of dug that there was this, like, war makes everyone monstrous. And so that that was sort of a refreshing take to see in something like where there's this yeah. kind of sci-fi. But, um, yeah, I, I think my issue is all this stuff talking. If people are listening to this and they're like, who cares? It's robots fighting. It's entertaining. Robots fighting. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this this movie got me in because, like, you know, old robots had machine guns right. and they were firing them off to air. But it's also the fact off. that it purportedly wanted to be a quote unquote smarter movie. It didn't just want to be yeah. another dumb, yeah, just robots fighting and blowing shit up, you know? And just the plot holes in this are, I, I, I do, I do my best to ignore plot holes because I'm like, hey, fine, narrative, narrative putty, just put it in there. I'm okay with plugging up pl- plot holes. But there was some tough stuff here where, I don't want to get into specifics that endear with spoilers, but you know, the reunion of uh, his wife, like based on the memories that she was going through that last memory she had, she's going to be pretty pissed at him. Yeah. And so exactly. instead they and reunited. They and they, just, and they kind of just again. immediately it's overlooked like, that. Like yeah. They run towards each other. Meanwhile, I think she's ready. Like, as the shit's blowing up around them, it's like, yeah, okay, okay. Like, you saw got that me one blown coming. up. <laughs> I don't know. And I, once again, yeah, but, maybe, but I feel like a good comeback. A loser. But, I, but I feel like a good comeback that he would have had is like, yes, I did get you blown up, but you became the robot messiah. So, like, <laughs> from a bed, <laughs> but still, oh god, oh man, Luke, what, what are your thoughts? What do you, what do you have to weigh in uh, on on these? Yeah, I think maybe the, some of the messages on the on the AI are maybe you could have you could have worked on those a little bit. But I guess it's it's more like if we if we ha- we have to embrace AI or otherwise it'll just right. turn on turn on us or something. Like it's here, it's now. We have to deal with it. We we made it. We have to deal with it now. So. Yeah. And, and you know just because you 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 made it now you now you have to blow it up it's typical Hollywood stuff but yeah. but I want to mention something a theory my, my friend proposed about about the the nuke in LA is that the government did that to, to start oh. the war on AI which we might have to a- ask Gareth Listen, Edwards that the one. government ask Gareth Edwards. never <laughs> when have never, they, never, when have never. they risked millions of lives to further an agenda oh come never, on never <laughs> We're we're not right the, on the up and up. Not the U.S. government specifically. <laughs> oh, no. they don't introduce several different diseases and drugs to try to oh, wipe no. out minority communities. Never, not. never. We would never do anything like that. Oh, but boy. I guess we should probably start like right at the beginning of this movie in terms of like breaking down kind of like what works and what doesn't because. It starts with the whole, oh, you know, this is every, you know, I, I love the little PSA that they had at the beginning of like mm-hmm. the origin of like robots, like starting with like a 1950s PSA. It's like, and how like robots have progressively evolved as, as part of being a part of our society before like the explosion actually happens. And then the US government is like, AI has attacked us. We will now not utilize AI in any and all situations, except for what we need to play, except for what we need to send out bombs. Um, suicide bombers. <laughs> the, one of them hesitating. The bombers. trash can that hesitated before. I thought for a like, second. We'll I thought I for a second <laughs> that that one bomb was going to go off right there and times blow more it up. Horrifying. I would say, I, uh, what? <laughs> I, I lost it at that part. This is, I just started <laughs> laughing. Like, this is Wallace and Gromit looking like trash can <laughs> robots. Like, I, I'm going to go with you. I adored the beginning of this movie. The beginning is really like good. my best part. It's just like, you know, yeah, it starts off with the, uh, like the world of tomorrow, like uh, a yeah. cinescope where, you know, they're just uh, lovely. Like, you know, they're just serving us breakfast. Then all of a sudden they start to actually work a little bit better than they can. Get I love how too conveniently that like the bomb goes off, like right when the robots are acting like as, as a form of like martial law. And, oh like, yeah, they definitely just decisions. upgrade and they upgrade it. And then, yes. then the bomb goes and then it's like dark. And then it's just like kind of like you could see that they're probably meeting in some kind of bunker at, yes. at the State of the Union meeting is a bunker. And we look at the guy talking who I don't know if he's the president or not, but he's in a military uniform. And, you know, that always goes well. Yeah. Um, so I think that like but it's assuming this guy is now taking control. And so he's all about that. Right. Um, so I yeah, the, the, like from there, like we got the exposition we needed. We understood what was going on. And um I, I just, yeah, I love that introduction a lot. That was like, you know, yeah. really, it's, really it's, good it's a bummer that was the best part. But <laughs> yeah, and then we get into the main character, which is, you know, we're a couple of years into the war. The, the bulk of this movie primarily takes place in Southeast Asia, very conveniently so, which is the part of the world that has continued to embrace AI. I love how they make it a point of two. It's like, re- remember, this is not a war against humanity, but for the humans that are teamed up with AI. And it's like, okay, like we get it, you know, but uh, what's it called? But then we're introduced to our main character, and 
I don't know if this is just going to be like a recurring trend with John, <laughs> with characters that John David Washington plays from the protagonist and uh, to, to Sergeant Joshua Taylor. And I'm just like, okay, that's definitely been the name of a main character that we've seen in other things before. Sean, you like, look I like know a guy really called Josh Taylor. He, I'm in a group go. chat with him. There you go. You're ruining my Some voice. of the extras in this movie that were robots wrote that name, Joshua Taylor. <laughs> Um, and it's the typical thing of where it's like oh you know he's in love with the enemy and he's crossed enemy lines but is he as he's revealed to be an undercover u.s agent trying to find the main ai source that is funding all of it it's, it's termed not nirmata and uh you know and of course it unfortunately goes wrongly you know there's a strike that comes in too soon he's forced to uh, you know his his his, his wife played, portrayed by Gemma chan uh discovers that he's an undercover agent and then there's bombs that go off and blow things up and of, of course he survived. Also, I wanted to like, I wanted to start an immediate drinking game with this where it's like, I wanted to take a shot every time somebody got caught in a shockwave of an explosion and survived. Like oh, so many like, times oh, just knocked over. So like, many times. And it's like, how many? It's, it's, it's like, the future. It's like, I, they got a vaccine. Not, they're not in the explosion. They they're just not in got, the explosion. Yeah. So but they okay. just got hit by the shockwave. They just got hit by a lot of rocks at a yeah, high and speed. Debris. And debris. <laughs> if anything I've learned from movies, you just have to jump before the shockwave yep. hits you. Exactly. And you'll be fine. It's like a small tidal pool wave. It was um, like the next step up from X-Men Origins. Instead of just walking away right into the camera from, from the shockwave, you have to jump up and get caught in it. And you'll be absolutely fine. It, it was something where it's like, I there was a few moments of this. And I just kept on going, oh, shockwave, he's good. After yeah. the first scene, of course, I was like, oh, yeah, shockwave, he's good. Um, so <laughs> every single time that happened, I'm, I'm like doing the math. And I'm like, the kid is like kind of far away from the explosion. So I look at him and I'm like, yeah, no, just a shockwave. He's good. Um, yep. I... Okay, let's get into the trashing and or uh, defending of uh, John David Washington here because yes. uh, I, he, he's not good in this movie. Um, no. And I'm someone that actually gives him a lot. I thought he was great in Tenet. I thought he was great in Ballers. I think he has a lot of talent. I thought Fantastic in Black Klansman. Fantastic in Black Klansman. And everyone's saying like, wow, he's performing really bad here. And he is, but let, let's look at really what he's been given as a character. And right. there is – nothing it's I mean, it's it's a really really generic growth, it it's work. a generic yeah. character arc where it's like okay he's been he's lost the one thing that is full, emotionally fulfilling so now he's a hollow shell and now he has to go on a mission that he where he's trying to reclaim what was once his and along the way he's gonna find that hole in his heart which is of course in the form of his son where or, or which it's like okay like we've like like, like I didn't call that from the first like minute that the, that the kid. You call that from the first minute of the kid. trailer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, just, I, saw, I mean, what, what is it? Our greatest weapon is a child. This has we it's have just seen a kid. this. Yeah, <laughs> we have seen this a lot. And so even in the trailer, which I was still excited for this movie, but it's like the greatest weapon is innocence. I'm like, oh fuck, oh god damn like, it, not again. <laughs> oh god and like i i i've watched iterations of movies all the time and i enjoy them i think that that by the end of this one when they're working together on the uh giant floating uh like uh weapon which is conveniently um, called uss nomad gee where have i heard that before nomad that's exactly okay yeah, yeah. I, I remember it was something so i <laughs> with nomad and i i remember just being like i'm not too interested in this this is the third act i'm supposed to be excited i'm supposed to be suspenseful like and I'm someone that like yes, I'm coming off as quite the snob in this whole this whole show, and but I I I can just watch things like go boom and like you know be invested in characters here, and I just wasn't really invested in anyone in this like whole situation. Um, I mean, it just uh, yeah, like that that was the part that got me. Is like the action was great until then, and I love the wartime action scenes that we yeah. get here, which is really really good shit. Like this is some great wartime stuff that we're seeing some solid wartime violence. And that's the stuff that made me jump. And I, yeah, definitely. You know, the, the violence in this movie was, was shocking to say the least. It's and, not grotesque, but like, it'll just be like a boat's just chilling there. And then that boat explodes right in yeah. front of you. And you know, a leg doesn't come flying at you, but still you're, you, th that jumps you, that, that gets yeah. you going. And so that was, I got that, that an I hour heard. earlier and saw, <laughs> yeah exactly dude this with saw probably works out very nicely it's a good companion i, I watched saw and then like 10 minutes later i was in the creator so oh my god <laughs> like, uh, and, and i was even telling luke earlier i'm like wow the fact that saw x is probably gonna win this weekend over the creator that says something about oh, well no that, that yeah at. that says something that horror will win against anything i mean that's yes. you know if there was a horror movie released during barbenheimer 
the horror movie would have gotten in front. It's true. Like, it's, it's just true. the horror movies just win now. But that's also pretending that Oppenheimer wasn't horrifying enough to begin with. I guess <laughs> Oppenheimer is a horror movie of that time. Yes, it, 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 in some capacity, yeah. But I, I will say, it feels like we've been dogpiling on this movie a yeah. lot, and to a certain extent, we have. But I do want to talk about some of the good things uh, about this. Like we, you know, we talked about the visuals, we talked about the wartime sequences, which are unbelievable. You know, the fact that obviously again they were able to make this movie look this good off again. I reiterate, an eighty million dollar budget, Marvel, DC, Star Wars. Take fucking notes, please. In terms of constantly complaining about why your movies are losing money, um, but I will say that while the the beginning of this movie and the first half is a little bit rough and a little bit predictable for sure, I will say that like. There was something about it once we got into, like, the last bits of sequences. It was like, like you guys have been saying, it was reminiscent of a lot of things. A lot of things that I've seen before, which is like, you know, they're bouncing around. They're going from location to location. They're losing characters. They're, you know, they're losing people left and right and all that. Particularly, I thought the sequence when he does finally reunite with Maya, or in this case, Nirmada, you know, um, what's it called? And, and you and you finally, like, get to see him, like, get, see, you know, what it is that he's been getting for going for the whole time. And and you get this like, like I don't know like the the emotional catharsis of this movie, it kind of did hit me. Predictable as it got, it did kind of really affect me. You know, once he did realize the kid was you know what was modeled after what would have been his son yeah. or daughter. You know, and the fact that it's like you know I always love like the race against time elements. You know, with the spaceship, el- you know, with the spaceship and all that. Like, and even though again I kind of figured I'm like oh he's not making it out of this one alive. You know, again, there was just there was something about it that really hit me, that that really really hit home. And like, I don't know if I'm just being a sucker right now, but listen, there 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 were beats there where I'm like sitting at those beats, kind of with my arms folded, being like, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. It didn't it didn't get into me, but they were doing the beats properly. They were yes. there. Um, I I personally, I think at that point, I just had such a stone wall up on this movie that I couldn't get to them. But right. I appreciated them. I did. Yeah. Um, See, I guess for me, just the stone wall was never fully up because I was yeah. engrossed. I was yeah. engaged. Like there was never a point where I was completely checked out and just wanted to like start making fun of it. You know, like I was engaged in the story. I was engaged, you know, in the characters, predictable as they were. You know, yes, John David Washington was a type that we've seen before, you know, without a doubt. Specifically, I thought the, particularly what was rough was all like those soldiers when they were introduced. I was like, okay, like not only are we ripping off aliens here, but we're doing it really badly. And here's these guys tank, are all like, here's Tink. Really generic. Well, let, let's and talk really about this. Note, As they head into battle, their their big thing is they're getting hyped up to a Radiohead song, and I I, I'm actually, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to denigrate Radiohead. They're great when you have like a cognac out, out alone on your porch. But I don't know if Radiohead is good for like about to murder many people. Like yeah. I think that was an interesting move. I like um Alice and Janney. I think uh, Glenn Weldon came up with this, where this is the uh, sequel to the sequel to the sequel of The West Wing, where C.J. Craig, after being <laughs> vice president, <laughs> is now going to battle. I mean, you can see she's bringing her C.J. Craig character. Oh my into this. god, you and that's crazy because see when it. I saw that fun fact, Alice and Janney is an alumni of my acting school, and I saw her like in the background when you see like her and Ralph Edison coming in. I'm like. Is that Allison Jenny? I was thrown for a loop because I don't think I've ever seen her in like an action movie of any kind. It was like it was so jarring to watch. I'm like, CJ Craig? Like what? <laughs> and is it bad enough that I still like whenever I see her, I still think of her playing like the crazy like woman who wanted to kill all of the animals and over the hedge? You know, is it bad that oh I still God. think of that? is it bad that I still think of that every time I see her and see her and hear her voice? I mean, interesting because it's animated, but yeah. So. <laughs> Well, in, in fairness, that is probably like, the closest to like you know the, the the likeness. Like they clearly modeled that character after her likeness, just in general. Oh, yeah. oh god! But yeah. um, yeah, like and obviously like donating your likeness, Dom. That that was oh, yeah. crazy. Like, <laughs> Whoa. Hey, there you go. There you go. That's another way. It all connects. It all connects. Oh man. And I and I, and I, and I will say too. How I, I want to keep talking about the battle elements, but I do find it interesting how we've been how how we have basically gone almost like half an hour into this discussion now and we have not really dove in deep into the ai implications you know and how this movie was trying to be timely by releasing it at a time when ai when chat gpt is arguably at its like most prevalent in the culture right now you know but also like you said i sean i do think that that was a really interesting point that you brought up about how you know that they released this movie right at the time when the strikes are getting resolved which a big part of the strikes have been about the usage of ai 
throughout this entire time, you know. So it, it is quite quite yeah. funny how that works. I don't even begrudge him because that's how that's how you do movies. Like you know, the 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 man is the evil one, and the misunderstood creature is what is like good, and so that's what you get for a satisfying audience. And so I'm like, okay, I'm on board for that. I understand what you're saying. I get what you're doing there. But yeah, it's just a little bit strange to have that here. And I also yeah. didn't really feel it. I was like, I think I'm supposed to still hate the AI. I think I'm right. supposed to still hate the humans as well because they're all doing terrible things. And then I right. remember, oh, yeah, it's because this is a war. And so, right. you know, from the like truly like this is a sci-fi picture. It's given the genre name of sci-fi. But this is really more war picture than anything else. Where Yes. You sure you have a side in some ways, but you are kind of not on the side of anybody because you see the atrocities from all of your characters on all sides. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, and and, and I, like I said, that part of the element, I guess just because I remember everybody's been talking so much about All Quiet on the Western Front that got nominated last year for Best Picture, and I just couldn't get into that movie because I kept thinking of 1917 where I'm like, the thing about war movies is that it, it, war movies like have so, uh, it, war movies I feel like aside from like certain others are like one of the most familiar when it comes to like expressing like certain traits tropes that like every time i see a war movie i'm like okay it has to up the ante you know like 1917 yeah. it did have a lot of the same private ryan man on a mission elements to it but it was the fact of how it was done in a way in such a way that i'd never really seen it before that i was like okay I'm, I'm i'm invested in this you know and it sort of became like a race against time kind of a movie and this one i definitely appreciated the references to apocalypse now to deer hunter to some of those like guerrilla vietnam movies that we that you know that that really made up for a lot of the 70s and early 80s and how they managed to like kind of bring that back around you know gareth edward i i, I feel like he he got to sort of experiment around with that in rogue one but i feel like really here he like puts that on full display especially with like you know more of the guerrilla elements versus you know the big massive you know american mili military industrial um machines you know especially i i i thought one particularly harrowing sequence was when you have like you know the shot of like you know they just see like the tree line getting knocked down and you're like oh, okay yeah. what is this going to be and then you have like the giant avatar tankers rolling in you know and i'm just like holy shit like that was insane to say the least yeah the scope alone of this does yeah. work and it, it, you know it, just it like amazing. trying to like figure out that nomad sort of thing where it's just you, it's so difficult to figure that out because it is in space and right. yet it's like coming over. Yeah, but it's, but it, it, again, the, the the symbolism of that I think really worked. Where it's oh, like, yeah. yeah, it's like kind of always overlooking everything. Yeah, it was know? it was a very interesting, like very intricate way. And so, like the world I'm getting from this, I was I was able to understand the world. I did. Yeah. Like it was the people inside of it and their choices that I didn't really get. But I I really understood this world. It was beautiful. It was nuts. And I mean, yeah, when we talk about these low budgets, I think it's because you have to, you know, you get some CGI, which is expensive, and you. Have to mix it with some practical which is right difficult and hard no, and yes. maybe in a couple of weeks we'll find out that all these vfx writers like you know were in a box for like you know 17 17 days without getting any food so we'll see we'll see if that occurs because it's, it's, it's going to be like the hot box that, that one seated <laughs> in, in the hot yeah, box. oh god um and i um yeah i, I this harkens back to uh foundation for me uh the uh, yes. apple tv series yes which when i the budget of that one is 115 which is more but that, that, that made me shit my pants because that thing is all effects and they're good. And yeah. so I wonder about like, OK, so spending too much on effects, that's causing them to be worse. Maybe it's just causing you to be a little bit more lazy. I, I don't know. But I think if like you're, if you tighten your belt with an effects budget, I think stuff comes out better. Well, the other difference, too, also when it comes to the effects is it's like a creative uh, – it's like a clear-cut vision. You know, Gareth Edwards has always seemed to be a guy who is very, very adamant and upfront about, like, yeah, the, you know, creating something that is 110% clear and crystal. And I feel like the biggest problem as far as, like, the, some of these bigger-budget superhero movies is they keep changing their minds. They keep giving them, like, only a week's notice to come up with, like, an entirely new design. It's like, well, then no wonder they look the <laughs> way like, that they do, hey, can, you know? Can, can you do it like this movie? But not exactly like this movie, you know? Just <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like every, every time. Pretty much. Like and, then, and, then if they, the... and then if they refuse, it's like, oh, you're blacklisted and no one else is ever going to work with you. It's like, OK, so that's that's how we're still doing business practices. OK, sounds good. Um, Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I, it's funny because the whole the whole size and scale thing, uh, it goes back to, to what Guillermo del Toro was saying. Obviously, you know, I remember him talking about this on Pacific Rim, uh, which ironically is also hitting its 10 year anniversary this year. Oh, my Jesus. God. But um, but. I remember him saying, it's like, yeah, if you want to make something feel like grand and epic, you have to really emphasize the size and the scope of it. And again, say what you will about Pacific Rim, but those Jaegers and those monsters felt 
enormous, you know? And I feel that's also a thing that, like, certain later Transformers movies based that say, which will about the Michael Bay movies, Luke. Um, I was about to right bring there. up the Michael Bay yes, movies. Yes, point go for I it. To go make. for it. I'm setting you up for that. Go for it. But before I get to that, to mention the low budget, lower budgets force people to be more creative. Like, yeah. like Dune is, like, 120, I think, right. ish. So, and, and that movie looks just spectacular as well. So, l- less budgets make more constraints so you just have to be creative and to go back to the why to my transformers comparison like the best visual effects is when you like you mix practical and visual so they went on location you can clearly tell that they were in some some asian mountains and landscapes and it's it's very beautiful and then you put like a big building in the background and it just makes it feel more real um you know you got your you got your chappy like robots um, yes which, yes, definitely. Which they're they're not like like the the main focus, so they ju- they just really blend it into the world. Well, I guess maybe that's just a testament to the improvement of, of CGI. How you can just get a robot in there and just place him, but but still, and and just to go back to the Gareth Edwards Edwards thing, he makes scale feel really good. Like he made the Death Star actually feel big and not just like a thing in space, and it's not next right. to anything. So we can can't compare it to anything. Of course, they blow up the Death Star in this movie as well. Oh, sorry, Nomad. Um, <laughs> although I will say, every time Nomad showed up on screen, it was like, yes, super yeah. cool thing in space. Yes. And then the, the scanning like thing it does, and the scanning yeah. thing it does, like, oh. it, it, it's intimidating in the in that way when it's just yes. scanning over. Yeah. So so that's my... And Transformers did that as and well. Transformers, they, yes, yes. They, they filmed it as well. They blew up a bus and then they put Optimus Prime in later. So just, yes. just things like that. Yeah, practical. But the whole thing is it's like, again, you want to emphasize the size of these things because that's the only way that you're actually going to make it feel uh, real. And again, there was never a part of this movie where I felt like it was small, you know, again, it's just like the size of these buildings, it seemingly like went up above the clouds, you know, and just, uh, you know, again, just like, I love those beautiful drone tracking shots, just always emphasizing the scenery, you know, you would have like the ultra, ultra wide shots of the boats going away from like the massive, and whenever the missiles came down from Nomad and blew something up, like you really feel, and even the size of those missiles, oh my God, like, and even on Nomad, you know, in order to emphasize the size of it, you know, all the people going through all those various different fields, you know, they're like, this world has felt so rich and so lived in and i constantly have to emphasize this because it's the fact of this is the stuff that's going to tell hollywood to keep making movies like this you know regardless of everyone's kind of like individual critiques or nitpicks oh this reminded them of this and this and this you know honestly i will take 15 more movies like this over another fucking decade of generic like schlock based off of ip that just makes me groan you know like, I'd rather something be like, okay, at the very least, this isn't a character that I have some familiar with, familiarity with. This isn't, like, a world that I have some familiarity with. You know, like, in terms of, like, artists stealing, I'll take something that I recognize but don't directly know versus something that I directly know and already have some sort of a pre-existing relationship with. I totally get that and understand it. But I think what they did here was just they were so excited about this being a completely original completely new and uh, creative idea that they didn't really focus too much on the substance of it and i think that when we have those ips some of like the people that work on these ips other ips they're all over the place but some of them they really do sit down and they think about the plan with all of these those characters and so while it might be annoying you know that we see captain america in a fifth movie we kind like they folk they do a lot of work with that captain america character in that one movie um then if endgame happened and there's been others but um, yeah. <laughs> um but, oh, yeah. uh, like like but, but Endgame but was through, the last one, of course. Through that Endgame through was that, it. Endgame was it. There is there Endgame, is yeah. aside from Guardians Three and maybe No Way Home, there is no MCU post. Pretty Endgame. much Endgame is my Game of Thrones season six. It's like, hey, cool, stop there. Uh, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I know everybody shits on season seven, but I love season seven. I, I love, love the first yeah. half of season yeah, seven. Season seven <laughs> I love like, all of season seven. Season it seven was great because it was just kind of like. Season hey. seven was the best summer blockbuster that I got of summer season of 2017. Season six was great. Season six was great. Season seven's pretty good. Season seven's pretty good. Then, like, you know, eight, as I'm season like, eight no, begins, I'm like, wait, what season? <laughs> <laughs> like, where are we? Oh, boy. So, I, I mean, I'm just saying that, yeah, like, pretty much, like, you could do the IP right. I mean, I think about, you know, Star Andor is technically IP. Technically. And that is some of the best Star Wars stuff I've ever seen. Now, granted, 
like about 17 people watched it. So like, True. cause it's just like, you know, star Wars, but just talking doesn't really sell. <laughs> really hey, it had a couple of prison break and high <laughs> sequences. Do you want to not see lightsabers or the force? <laughs> like, check out Andor. <laughs> we talk space politics. And so like, I get that that was pretty much you didn't like about the prequels. We're going to really go hard on that. <laughs> there was all vegetables with Andor, but it just was the greatest thing in the world. The vegetables this... are good for you. I will admit Th- that. Yeah. Th- there Some we go. Vegetables. And then good seasoning on those vegetables. Oh, yeah. one, so, I, all so, I saw you, was you cotton see that candy. Extra little bit of seasoning. And then with the creator, there was pretty much just cotton candy the whole time, which once, once again, quite delicious. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Like enjoyed the sugar, but I had diarrhea after because it just didn't <laughs> you know, like, I, I just remember being like, I, and cause I was rooting for this movie so hard. Like everyone else is and everyone giving it a good review are feeling reached. Cause we have that original story here, but I, I, I think the wrong lessons were learned by Hollywood on this one, where it's just like, you know, cool, original Wait, story. What, cool, Hollywood original... learning the wrong lessons from a exactly. movie? That cool. I what? never had. Barbie? What? what? Uno more movie? more of IP based on toys? No. Yes, exactly. I mean, hey, if but you know, if they keep on making those creative, then cool. Although I will say, I will say, Daniel Kaluuya's Barney movie in the style of an A24 horror movie, I don't know. I, I have, I I have an in, issue with that. And I might be invested in that. Here's my issue. It's not an A24. It's not an A24 movie. It's in the style of an A24 it's in the movie. Style of an A24 They're gonna try movie. to copy an A24 movie. Yes. We know that's gonna be pure dog. My, my hope, my hope <laughs> is that it, my hope is that it's one of those so bad it's good situations. That, that's yeah. that's my hope. It's when I heard style of A24, like if I heard A24 producing the movie, I'm like, okay, style of A24? Fuck no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> So with that being said, in the last 20 minutes of this movie, I do want to have the AI discussion because I I, I I like to give this movie props for at the very least because, again, there's no way – because when they were making and filming this movie, there was no way in hell that they were aware of what would happen, oh, yeah. at least with the strikes. As far as the chat GPT goes, yeah, again, like pro- they were probably shooting this around like this time last year. You know, they're probably – you know, Ch- ChatGPT really only surfaced, I want to say, in like the spring of 2023. It really wasn't, I feel like, as big of a discussion point and a part of the culture in around in like September, October of 2022. But I will say that uh, I-, I-, I like to give this movie credit for taking such a hard set stance on artificial intelligence and everything. As far as them like trying to do be like the opposite of Terminator. In terms of being like, oh, in that one, the AI is the bad guy. In this one, the AI is just like the downtrodden underdog. And it's like the humans that are screwing everything up. It's like, I get where it's coming from, for sure, because at the end of the day, humans do create AI. But in terms of the whole trying to do a twist on the, oh, you know, the the the, the next stage in evolution, supplanting the original, but it not being violent and it just trying to survive. Um, I mean... I like it. I like that it's like different, but I don't know, like many other things in this movie, if it was handled correctly, you know? So I, I just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on that. My my thoughts are uh, educated badge of Nomad was pretty, so movie good. No, I, I don't want to be mean to people. That, no, that's me. Mean that's me. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. I feel like this I entire thought, podcast you know has just been like maybe Sean Loki roasting was... Luke without even realizing it. Listen, I, I gave this movie a C. It's a pretty guided. average movie, okay? But, I'm like... but Nomad was cool. <laughs> So I'm a, I'm a simple man. I see cool spaceship. I'm happy. I, I, that stuff did get me. I'm telling you. Well, I, to to actually uh, give a more educated answer, um, everything just felt muddled. Uh, what they're trying to say. I don't right. know what their message was. Like, I yeah. guess their message was robots good, humans bad. Yeah. War is bad. It, robots it, good. Humans bad. Uh, down with I, industrial I, with industrial complex. Set the robots free. Like, you know? I, I just truly it just. It ended the way it did, which was like kind of nowhere. I mean, they got the nomad down, which I, I have a feeling they there will be plenty one, of repercussions. A bigger one. Yeah. But um the Death Star. And again. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, exactly. They'll just build a bigger one. That's gonna be the sequel to this, which yes. will then they have to backtrack all of their marketing. Yes, and it's like this time it's like, oh, how are we gonna bring back John David Washington as an as 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 a what 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 is it called? As as a as a what what do they call the 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 simulants? Oh, yes. so he'll as wear like a lot that were that look like humans that had the skin masks. Yeah, I like how they did like they worked really hard to get these like completely perfect looking skin masks to make sure they definitely look like humans. Then all they had to do was look left or right. And it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh! like where, where, where <laughs> are hood or something? Did not work. Did not work. 
little bit of his eye. Well, that, that's what made the cute little kid work. It's like, oh, just put a hat they put on a hat on the kid. Yeah, the, the hat, that works Okay, fine. what's this metal disc on your... On the, yeah. on <laughs> what's this little metal ear? spinning thing where your cerebellum should be? Um, I, yeah, I, um, I just felt everything was a little bit muddled of what it was trying to say. And yeah. I, I wanted, I wanted to, I, I, you know, and, and an action movie doesn't have to say anything. I just watched True Lies. Doesn't say a goddamn no, thing. Doesn't have any sort of message. Exceptional movie. Exceptional movie. Yeah. And so I think like, but if you're going to try to say something, it needs to be coherent. And this movie was trying to say something. And I, I, I didn't know what it was that I yeah. wanted to say. And that was the part that really bugged me out. I will say though, I think that there are definitely elements where this felt like a message movie at some points, but I also, I don't know necessarily and this is the one thing where I will remain hard stance on. I definitely think that this may be one of those instances where, again, because of the subject matter, it is very much people are mapping this as being a message movie when in reality it's just trying to be a genre movie. You know, yeah. and genre movies don't always have to have messaging. Definitely Obviously, and because of the history of science fiction in cinema, and also because of the fact that this is a mix between two very, very big genres, you know, science fiction and war, you know, and as well as mixing in a little bit of dystopic future as well. I think that th there are elements of this where it is simply trying to be a genre. Oh, hey, doggy. Um, <laughs> Why didn't they make an AI dog? What right? You like, <laughs> you, had, you had the one scene in the beginning, which, again, this is one scene where I don't know if they were trying to make this a joke or not, where the dog picks up the grenade and carries it out and just plays that was it very and throws funny. it by the robot. <laughs> I thought that, that, that was great. That. So there are two moments in this, in, like, the first, like, hour where I'm like, a dog's about to fucking die. Right, and right? Like, and I'm like, I can't do this, man. Like, <laughs> you can't do this to me. And I think neither time the dog died, so right on. But, like, the, oh, boy. That, that was not okay for me. I was like, please don't let these dogs die. Hollywood has at least learned the rules there which is just like we cannot kill dogs we cannot kill dogs and if we do it's got to be a wes anderson movie where it's basically like a cartoon or if they do it's a john wick and a whole lot of people are about to die as or good old yorgos lanthimos exactly exactly we will we, we, we will see that once uh once once poor things comes out but uh <coughs> sorry guys i'm still recovering from being sick as as my congested voice and tone has probably not told you but so I think that's kind of where I'm torn right now is because you're right. If this is a more, if this is trying to be a message movie, then yes, I'm totally with you 100%, Sean. There are definitely a lot of points where this is really muddled. But if this is just trying to be a genre action war movie, then I don't know. This may be another one of those situations that I hate. I hate saying this. But this may be another situation where people are reading into it a little bit too much. And I, I, I can listen. I am the last person that likes saying that. I despise saying that because I call people out all the time, specifically when they try to justify shitty animated movies and be like, oh, it's just for kids. What did you expect? It's yeah. like an entire decade of Pixar and good Disney and DreamWorks says otherwise, says that not all uh, animation has to be dumb. It's just that like people don't, it's just that illumination and minions have become the, the, the trademark for kid for what they market to kids now. But and let's face it. If this movie was more simple, I'd, I'd be on board with all of this, uh, right. but they were trying to yes. put something in there and trying to say something in there. And the emotional turn for John David Washington, I did not buy. And it's not because of David Washington's acting. It's because that character all of a sudden, hated the kid thought he was an it and then all of a sudden loves the kid and yeah like if it's the one moment where the kid puts his arm on on, on the shoulder i'm like you know maybe in reality maybe he was like works, maybe but... he was controlling like 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 the robot because they established pretty early on that he has Brain a multiple and and MUT, yeah. right he's got a robot leg and he's got a, a robot arm so maybe he was like you know doing doing his little uh his his control his you know controlling thing do because that's the other thing too is that like the kid was basically robot jesus you know where he could control all machines but i am kind of a little sad that there was a point where he just went full-on magneto and sort of like and shop with the machines but at the same time i'm also glad because it made it slightly more realistic yeah I, I get that he was young so i guess he couldn't use his full machine powers but i feel like you get you just drive by the nomad and like i don't know like you could probably do do damage to him like, half mm -hmm. of it. <laughs> yeah just do yeah. a quick damage to half of it. i mean the guy took down the border I mean, like, yeah. the dude could probably do a little bit more for you uh, yeah. with the whole situation. But instead, like, they, they all had to run through different parts of the machine. And, you know, the, like, I, it's fine because that creates the that creates the suspense. Okay, cool. Um, But why did John David Washington have to be the one to call him in, to get called in to kill the uh, kid robot? Like, I, a part of me says that, you know, yeah, anybody could have, been could have done that. And so they brought him in, and that fucked or, everything or, up for them. Or, 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 <laughs> would, it, would it not? Would it not have been more interesting if, instead of doing that dumb thing where every time there's a shock blast wave, he gets, like, thrown out? What if <coughs> they showed him dying in the beginning, where he dies in that blast, 
and then we're following a simulant of him for the rest of the movie. And he has to reconnoiter with the fact that it's like, okay, am I this killing machine for the U.S. government or am I, you know, actually – have a soul of my own as he like is embedded in with the with the rest of the sims and the robots it has to like you know deal with the idea of like maybe betraying his own kinds and all that you know yeah, for, for a brief moment i thought there's gonna be a twist he's been ai the whole time but then right. like maybe like a third into the movie i thought mm, it's not nah, it's, it's probably not gonna happen yeah well, the but, twists uh, were when they kept on mentioning the you know robot daddy's name and uh, it turned out to be robot mommy and yeah. i'm like i saw that coming a mile away and then i'm yeah. like oh this kid is gonna be the kid that they had and stuff like are they yeah. were gonna have Come on, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Also, I, I I did want to point this out because we've we've been referring to the kid as he the entire time, but the actress's yeah. name that plays it is Madeline Yuna Voyles. So I think it's because of the cut hair, but I believe that that is supposed to be a little girl. Supposed it is to a little be? girl. They mentioned a little girl throughout the entire movie. Yeah, I keep on yeah. like I have to pause myself. No, it's, it's because it's, it's because of the shape. Yeah, that's the yeah. shape. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, that is it. So with that being said, people, final thoughts and star ratings on the creator. Luke, I want to start with you this time. You know, I I, I wish I could have gone out of the movie th thinking about like some deep AI message. Like just I, I'm not asking this movie to be Oppenheimer. But after mm -hmm. that, I was like deep in thought. But you know me, I, I love a fun romp. And I was there thinking, going out, thinking about all the cool, the cool cars with the spinning wheels, the the Nomad, of course, and, and the... <laughs> <laughs> the, the garbage, the garbage can, can bomb, the, bomb the garbage man. Can the garbage can bomb, bomb man was great. So, yeah. So I I really enjoyed it. So I'm I'm giving it a four point five out of five right now. It's it's my what is it? It's my I think it's my number five of the year. Nice. Yeah, num number five of the year. Nice, Sean. Your final thoughts and star ratings. Final thoughts. I think I pretty much said everything. And as a whole, it feels like I'm negative. Uh, the visuals make up for a Incredible. lot of the crap that Incredible I feel visuals. like. So, like I said, go see it in a theater. You won't be satisfied by the story. Some of you and some of you have considered you do not care. So that's fine. Um, I think the story does help something like this, though. And I understand that I'm here to see robots fighting. I understand that I'm here to see cool spaceships and that it accomplished its mission there. But the movie wanted more out of me, and I just couldn't give that. And so with that, uh, I'm giving it a three out of five stars for, Got you know, it. the visual stuff is great. Uh, but, you know, uh, Gareth Edwards, find yourself another writer. Do, get the writer. He, he from, was uh, the writer. He, well, he was the writer. And also it's him, exactly. and, Chris, him and Chris White, who also wrote Rogue One. So. Um, well, I with want him, with uncredited rewrites from Tony Gilroy. I want him to have the writer of uh, Brian Duffield, who just uh, wrote and directed uh, "No One Will Save You." Um, on yeah, Hulu. that that movie that got like a little bit of hype on, on when, when it dropped. And on then uh, I think I watch that tomorrow. He's done that. He's done spontaneous, and so he does stuff where it's like it's weird, it's sci-fi, it's goofy, and then also um, it there is a message. And no, you're not beating your head over a message on these kind of things. You're not like, you know, it's it's just that there's something there nice that if you want to, if you want to like, you know, reach over to the box, that message you can. If you don't, though, you can just watch high schoolers blow up spontaneously combust all, all movie. And that's fun, too. So <laughs> that sounds great. My final thoughts. I think I'm somewhere in between you guys where I see you guys. I, I, I see where both of you guys are coming from, Sean. I recognize all of the all of the uh, the plot holes and predictable twists and everything. And again, it, it is in, in line with the rest of Gareth Edwards movies where, again, it's not necessarily as deep as it could be, but at the same time, I recognize it for the genre that it is, and I enjoyed the visuals, I enjoyed the look, I enjoyed that I was able to engross myself in a world fully, and just able to kind of like go along for the ride, and for again, for when this movie needed to hit emotionally, specifically near the end, it hit me for sure. I enjoyed myself my time with this one. I really did. This one fell like right outside my top 10. I'm giving this one four out of five stars for sure. I, I really, really enjoyed my time with this one. Contrary to what we may have been, uh, to, to what the, this is probably going to go down in, in, in our canon from 2023 as being the, the most confusing podcast that we have done so far this year. But I start I started it on such a low point. I completely blame myself. Well, let, listen, put it this way. When you start low, you only have up to go. So there that's we go. Kind of there we where go. we're wrapping up. Luke, Sean, thank you guys once again for coming on. Uh, what's it called? Where could the good people follow you on the interweb? Starting with Sean. 
Uh, so I am on Math Teacher Movies on Instagram, and I hated Twitter before it was cool, so I never had a Twitter. Um, but yeah, Math Teacher Movies on Instagram, and then also the Guy at the Movies podcast comes out every week, probably around Monday. Uh, where we've been, or our schedules have been a little bit poopy lately. But uh, Guy at the Movies podcast, where we go to get into some uh, fun movie opinions and uh, a bunch of fun movie news. Which now there'll be some movie news after the strike has ended. Yes, thank God. And, I, and Sean, I think you were forgetting one thing. It's not Twitter anymore. It's X. X. X with the emphasis behind the vocal tones. I think the problem is, is that now there's like an X-Men logo, like that's like a promotion for and it looks just yeah. like the X. And yeah. It's like it, 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 oh it's boy. not helping. It's not helping. It's anyone. not good. Yeah. Luke, where can the good people follow you on the interwebs? Uh they can follow me at Luke Reviews on Instagram and sometimes YouTube, which my top ten of the year is starting to take shape. I, I can yes. visualize it. So I have to do that video. I, I yes, promise I have myself to. I will do that. Um, or you can find me on here more often than not. It seems <laughs> like I said, you're, you're, you, you, you basically been my number two for this whole year. So yeah, Dom just re- re- sends me, Hey, you want to come on the creator? I'm like, oh, okay. I'll, well, I'll come on the well creator. in fairness, I, 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 I was looking at the spot at, at the amount of guests that I had lined up and I'm like, I feel like I'm missing somebody for this. I'm like, who's, I'm like, who's my resident sci-fi head here? And I'm like, Luke, where's Luke? So, you know, that kind of is what led to that. Ultimately, you guys can of course follow me with everything going on at movie nerd reviews across all platforms. Be sure to follow the official talk and TV podcast across all platforms. Subscribe to us. If you're watching us on YouTube, follow us. If you're listening on Twitch, this episode will be available tomorrow on Spotify and Apple podcast as we get closer and closer to the end of the year and the end of our fifth podcasting season. We're almost into 2024, which means season six, which means we will be halfway through to our ending resolution of 12 seasons in a short film and watch more fucking movies. We'll see you guys next week with Exorcist and Loki season two.